This is the 8th grade TCAT practice test for math. This is question number 49. Parallel lines T and U are cut by transversal, forming 8 angles, as shown below. The measure of angle 1 is 48, so I'm going to mark angle 48, or angle 1, I'm sorry, and make it so it's 48. What is the measurement of angle 7? Well, angle 7 is right here. That's where it's located. There's a couple ways you can go about it. You can see that in the top little uh, kind of a plus sign almost, like a sort of an X here, on top of the parallel line here and on the bottom of the parallel line here, our two angles exist, which means they're exterior angles because they're both outside. If you can do the exterior angle thing and you can remember that same side exterior angles are supplementary, you know all I'm going to do is subtract 48 from 180. Okay, well, what happens if you can't remember to do that? There is a method that makes it very easy to determine whether they are going to be equal or whether they're going to be supplementary, which means to say that they add up to equal 180. And it's called but, Zorro, but. I talked about it in one of the other videos. It's a stupid name, I know, but in terms of but, angle, but, the first thing you need to do is mark an angle that's one of the exterior angles. I could have marked 1, 2, 7, or 8. Since they told me about 1, I just marked that one. Now I need to mark the angle with the same but as 1, which is to say the vertical angle for 1. So I'm going to mark this angle right here, which is number 4. See how they have the same but? It's like they face away from each other. So those are the ones with the same but. Now we have to talk about Zorro. If you uh, know anything about Zorro, there's a movie or whatever. He was like a sort of a Spanish hero. And anytime he was there, uh, after he defeated his enemies, he would put like a Zorro in the tree. Well. That way they knew he was there. They put it in a tree that was nearby, not just some random tree. Anyway, so he made the Zorro. Well, sometimes Zorro can do it backwards as well. So what we need to do is make a Z, including that four angle that we just marked. So I'm going to mark right here, because you see that angle is included in my little Zorro. So I just need to finish the Z and make sure you know I have the Zorro. The other angle that is inside that Z is also marked. So the angle 5, which is part of the Zorro, is also marked. So I've got but, Zorro, and now it's time for but. So I just find the but angle for 5, which is, of course, 8. It's vertical angle. Really what I did uh, mathematically is mark uh, the original angle. I marked its vertical angle. I marked uh, the in, uh, alternate interior angle for the uh, angle 4. And then I marked the vertical angle for angle 5. But, you know, but, Zorro, but works just fine, too. Now, the key to but, Zorro, but, if they are both... If both the angles that we're wondering about are marked, or both unmarked. So if I was asked about angle 1 and angle 8, they would fall into this category, because they're both marked, because 1 has the mark here, and 8 also has the mark. Angle 2 does not have a mark, and neither does angle 6. So those would both be considered unmarked angles. So if they are both marked, I need to, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my mind there for a moment. If they are both marked or they are both unmarked, I don't know why I wrote both marked twice, both unmarked, in either of these situations, the angles are congruent. That means they're the same. So both marked, both unmarked, they're the same, they're congruent. So 2 and 6 have the same value. So do 1 and 8. Now 1 and 2 do not have the same value. If 1 is marked and 1 is not, 1 mark, 1 not, it means that they are supplementary. Sorry about the horrible handwriting. Or they're equal to 180 when you add them together. Sum equals 180. So in this case, if you look at angle 1, it's marked. If you look at number 7, it is not marked. There's no line over it, which means they're supplementary. So all I need to do to solve this is set angle 1 plus angle 7 equal to 180. I can plug in 48 for angle 1. Then I'm just solving the equation. I'm going to subtract 48 from both sides. I don't know why I felt the need to write that little angle sign there. I think because I was going to try to skip a step, but that's really lazy of me. So angle 7 is equal to... ...132 degrees. 
And that's the case any time. So if you're given one angle and you have to know another and you've got that whole parallel lines thing going on, you can use but, zero, but, and then find out that if they're both marked or both not, they're both equal to 48 uh, or whatever the original uh, n amount is. And if they're one is marked and one's not, they're supplementary. So in this, angle one, angle four, angle five, and angle eight are all worth 48. One, four, five, and eight are all worth 48. And because all the unmarked angles are worth the same, that would make 7, 2, 3, and 6 all worth 132. So if you lose your mind and you forget that uh, same side exterior angles are supplementary or whatever you happen to figure out, you know, you can do it and still get the right answer. I kind of like but, zero, but. If you don't like it, that's fine. Just memorize the angles and their relationships. There's tons of other ways to do it. But that is one way you can go about it that I kind of like.